Hello, I am Jason Howard, and welcome to the Inclusions of Special Populations Training 703 KAR 5 070. This is Module 1 of 8 that make up this entire training. In Module 1, we will take a close look at who is, in, who is and is not included, accommodations, and then the options available all per the inclusions regulation. During this module, we will take a closer look at each of these areas and describe the intentions and specifics of each. So the first part represents inclusion, and inclusion means to do just as it sounds, to include. An accommodation should never be provided as a means to give a student an unfair advantage over their peers or take something away. It is meant to provide the same level of opportunity as everyone else, to include in the same manner. In this part of the training, we are going to look at students who are included, those who are not, and the definition of an accommodation. The last area we will dive into are the three options for participation in state assessments. The first thing I want to direct your attention to on this slide is the blue arrow at the top of the page. The blue arrow reflects the location this information is found in the actual regulation document. Even though this training provides an in-depth look at all parts of the inclusion of special populations regulation, it does not give every detail like the actual regulation. If you need to know more, go to the regulation and look for the page number shared throughout this training. There are six sections covered in this regulation. Every section represents a different student group and the services they are eligible to receive under specific conditions. The sections represented include students with IEPs, Students who speak English as a second language or may have access to a program service plan, and some may also require an IEP as well. Students who have a 504 plan or medical emergency occurs and accommodation is necessary. Students who are in an alternative or state agency setting. Students who receive instruction in home hospital settings. And students who participate in the Kentucky Alternate Assessment. So now we talked about who is included. Now we need to talk about who is not included. So most students are covered in this regulation in some way. However, there are some groups of students that this regulation does not represent. Those are students who may age out at 21 years of age or older. Students who are considered part-time students and may be enrolled in a Kentucky public school six hours or less per day. The last group would be students who are enrolled in a general education program or GED that is not part of a Kentucky public school system. As noted earlier, most students are represented throughout. Now, on this slide, we look at what the definition of an accommodation is as it relates to state assessments. So accommodations provide support, but do not reduce learning expectations. Accommodations are individualized and specifically designed to aid in learning. Not all accommodations can be faded over time because not all students would be able to move toward greater independence due to the nature of the disability. Now we're going to talk about what the options are for inclusion in state assessments. So a student's IEP team or Admissions and Release Committee, ARC, must meet annually to determine a student's least restrictive environment and learning plan. The team will take into consideration through data-driven results, observations, formative and summative assessment, as well as other determining factors, the plans for adding or removing accommodations. There are three options for inclusion in a state assessment. They are with no accommodations, which means an accommodation is not needed or is not eligible at the time of testing. Those with accommodations, which means that the ARC or IEP team have met and developed the annual plan to include those accommodation types permitted for the student come test time. The last option is the student, even with access to the necessary accommodations, is still unable to access the general curriculum in a manner equivalent to their peers. The ARC or IEP team would then complete the participation guidelines for the uh, Kentucky alternate assessment and assess the student in a way on in that way on a year to year basis. A student's ARC is responsible for determining which accommodations, if any, are necessary to provide individualized supports. This concludes module one of this training series, a module dealing with inclusion and very specific rules governing the students that are and are not covered by this regulation. 
If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at kde-info by email at dacinfo at education.ky.gov or by phone at 502-564-4394. Thank you for joining us for module one of this training series. Please continue to module two of this training series.